We have a panel coming up, and these gentlemen are ridiculous. Um, they're pretty interesting, but they asked me if my note cards also had the answers. Um, my favorite question is going to be the first question, but they're bringing their own chairs. Uh, I think we're all here, yes? Come on up. Um, let's see. So, Sean Wilkinson with Sado. Thank you for bringing your own chair. I don't know. You'll have to, you know, negotiate it with, with your colleagues here. Uh, oh, I like your decisiveness. Uh, David Thorpe from Team Internet. You are. That's your chair. It's his chair. All right. Way to own it. Ryan, oh, slacking off, not bringing your chair. Uh, Ryan DeCourcy, you in? Yes. Uh, with Domain Manage. And James Tuplin just popping on up from BOTUS. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for being here. We're going to talk about domain parking. Um, I do not have a chair. Um, yeah, good, but thank you. Yeah, I mean, unless, am I making you uncomfortable? No, no, no. Are you intimidated? We're, we're now, oh, am I taller? Yeah, well done. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. um, okay, so let's just, let's get started, yeah? But maybe move your chairs so you look like you talk to each other and like each other. Uh, yeah. Are we convinced yet? Yeah. No. Oh, also, snacks just got set up. So feel free, pop on over. All right, gentlemen, I moved the questions um, because this has to be first. It's the best. Well, why are we here? Why are there always domain parking panels? Um, or isn't parking just stupid people clicking links? That's a valid question, right? Like, are you a little curious, like, why this always happens? Some of you. Um, so that's, oh, you don't have microphones either. And someone gave me a clicker. I feel very powerful. Who wants to go first? Me. Um, is it stupid people clicking links? Um, I think what's interesting is that if you went out into London today and you asked a thousand people what the main parking was, 999 of them are not going to know. <laughs> One person may know what it is, and this is the general public, but if you screen grabbed a, a, a parking page and you went out to the same thousand people, probably 500, 750 of them would know and have brand recognition with what the main parking is without knowing what it is. Um, so it's quite interesting because there is a brand behind parking that could be monetized in a better way or a different way. Um, and I don't think it is about stupid people clicking links. Um, where it gets cute is when you put the right product in front of the right person. Sorry. Yeah, I think uh, what you have to remember is that um, domain parking traffic, so organic traffic, is highly, highly valuable traffic. Um, in a lot of cases, it's, uh, it comes from people who maybe mistyped a domain name, so they are actually looking for something in particular. Um, and of course, um, any click, any ad click, you're going to get some churn, you're going to get a, a percentage of people that maybe clicked on it by mistake or um, actually had no genuine interest in the in the advertisement behind it. But um, because um, the nature of park tra uh, organic traffic and uh, traffic that goes to park domains is highly is uh, highly targeted, it comes from backlinks that link to a specific genre or from um, yeah, typos, as I said. Um, I think it's uh, it's generally it's generally agreed, and it's generally agreed by many advertisers as well that uh, this is highly highly valuable traffic. Yeah, and I think sometimes we can maybe in our world we can be in a kind of a bubble uh, where we think. I mean, yeah, no, I and mean, I know that wasn't your your word. It was just like for the question, but people who are not in the bubble that we are, it doesn't mean they're stupid, right? They, they, it, it's actually the vast majority of people who, you know, as, as Ryan said, they couldn't tell you what parking is or, you know, they've, they've gone somewhere, they've seen, they've seen, they've come to this parking page, maybe something relevant for them. Uh, so maybe it is something useful for them. They'll click on it. Yeah, it's, it's not stupid people clicking links. It's just the general public clicking links. If it was, you know, and that's why it's, you know, worked over the years. Yeah, I think um, just to add to Sean's point, um, there's a reason why they're uh, actually landing on these pages. They're actually looking for a product or a service. So they're not actually necessarily looking for the, the, the expired website. They just want to buy 
a car or they just want to buy plumbing services. So as long as you kind of serve the relevant ads, you know, you are actually offering them a, a you know, a valuable service so long as the advertising is targeted. And kind of with the domain parking, you've got kind of the, the uh, ad reach worldwide, Google, and they can serve, you know, pretty much ads in every single niche, every single category there is. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, what percentage of parking is, uh, or the income generation, uh, is coming from traffic arbitrage versus from either small, small portfolio holders, giant portfolio holders? Do you have any numbers or generalizations you can share? Ooh, James is yeah, excited so, to answer. Yeah, it, it's one of those things you can't give like exact numbers, but what, what I can say is Bodice has been around for, it's probably put me on the spot now, 12 years or more. Uh, and since we kind of got involved in kind of paid traffic, so what, what actually referral traffic, arbitrage traffic is, is the uh, methodology of kind of buying traffic from one source at a lower EPC and sending it to another um, source, so e.g. Uh, Google. So you'd be, and this traffic isn't actually cheap either. You'd think, oh yeah, this is, you know, this is easy money, but these people are actually buying this traffic, for, you know, let's say 30 cent a click, but they're actually um, targeting really high EPC terms. So $2.50, $3 a click. So that's basically what traffic arbitrage is. The size of uh, this opportunity, um, going back to a previous point, Bodice has been around now, I believe, 12 years or somewhere around there. And kind of, we've only actually been kind of started in the arbitrage game in the last year and a half, two years. And already it's, it's larger than Bodis and significantly larger than Bodice in, in a year and a half. It's just it's the sheer volume of it, isn't sheer it? Volume. It's the sheer yeah. volume of it. So, so yeah, well, one of the main differences, uh, kind of domain traffic, you've only got kind of a finite amount of domain traffic. And this is limited by the amount of domains people own and the amount of traffic on these domains. If you've got kind of paid traffic, there is no limit. You know, the, to give you an idea, kind of an organic portfolio owner will maybe do, I don't know, let's just say, on average, a couple of thousand a month. You know, obviously the, there's kind of exceptions as people, you know, doing six figures a month, but typically it's a couple of thousand a month. Now on the arbitrage side, I would say kind of an average um, earnings per month would be, you know, 250,000 upwards, you know, a million a, a month. And these people, you know, it, it's not a case of they start off at 2,000, they start off at 250,000. Next month, can we do half a million? Month after, let's, let's do a million. Month after, let's do two million. So you can see, you know, although we can't kind of share the, the, the exact figures, I'm sure you'll be able to kind of understand, you know, just how much bigger the kind of pay traffic is. And that's kind of the direction where, um, you know, I can see kind of parking going kind of more you know, publish sites rather than just traffic from domains. Well, we should say as well, though, is of course, you know, we see, you know, you'll see a million a month, that person did a million a month on Bodis or Tonic or, or Cedo. Uh, what we don't see is what they've spent, you know, to get that million. You know, it's a relatively, relatively low margin business like as well. 30% or something. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we... I think it's probably, if I was going to come up with a figure, I think probably 80% would be traffic arbitrage. We're looking at a business at the moment that does 40 million of revenue in arbitrage traffic. It's a four-year-old business. Right? That scale to get from a business that's four years old is incredible. So I think that the, the kind of the golden bullet for domain parking for people who have five or 10 domains is if you spend $10 a year on a domain name renewing it, can you make $10? That's, that's the bit that works for small portfolio holders. But arbitrage is a huge, huge sector of the internet in general um and yeah so i think it's substantially higher than um than an individual portfolio with a hundred domains or a thousand domains so uh yeah we, like we said we can't really sh share specific numbers i mean I, I i couldn't even if i had them to hand but uh yeah let, let's just say ryan's uh number there was was a pretty good ballpark answer very helpful thank you i love how competitors collaborate um Fabulous. Uh, so there have been some changes in laws in California, the EU, and the UK. First, what, uh, David, do you want to tell me what are those actual changes? And then we'll talk about how they've impacted uh, parking? 
Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, at the end of, well, towards the end of last year, there were, uh, the, well, our tier one advertising partner basically um, informed us that they were going to enforce um, regulations that, uh, that have been long standing in the EU to uh, basically require cookie consent for visitors to, uh, to park pages. And uh, this applied to um, all countries in the EU uh, and also the UK as well. Uh, we should also say that. Um, yeah, we, it was initially it was an initially quite a large shock to us, and we expected um, kind of uh, a negative impact on our revenues, up to sort of negative thirty, negative forty percent. Um, and yeah, because this would be this would this could be a killer to our industry, especially in these regions. We uh, we just we started to uh, a, a parking crew and a tonic, which is the uh, which is the arbitrage uh, platform for for Team Internet. Um, we started to make preparations in order to produce the the best banner that provided the, that resulted in the sort of the least impact for our clients. Um, we expected the worst, and then after the tests that we ran towards the end of the year and beginning of this year, we actually found for a lot of visitors, specifically for domain traffic, that um, the banner actually had a legitimizing effect so um user visitors came Le legitimizing legitimizing effect so they came to the uh, they came to the part page a banner was shown i mean for most internet users across europe it's very it's very normal to be asked to opt in or opt out and um we we actually saw that this kind of uh added added an extra layer of let's just say safety to visitors who were going to park pages so the impact although yeah partially there was a sort of a negative impact i think uh, i can quote figures in the uk and in germany kind of around negative five percent on uh, on on uh, on revenues the impact was definitely not as great as we thought i mean obviously we thought if we were going to add an extra click to the flow we we're going to lose a lot of uh, lose a lot of business but uh, yeah this wasn't the case so all in all uh, it was good that we prepared for the worst and uh, yeah we actually had a much better outcome than we expected yeah i'd kind of agree and disagree kind of there, there was kind of two uh, types of cookies. There's like the CMP cookie, which is kind of the, the pop-up cookie, which everyone's seen. And then there's a IVT cookie, which is kind of like an invalid traffic cookie. So kind of all the parking companies initially started off using the CMP, the pop-up, I agree to, you know, I consent to, you know, being tracked. Uh, and initially, yeah, we thought it had a very minimal effect. However, then when we looked at it uh, deeper, we're only tracking the stats from Google. So kind of, we saw the kind of CTR, you know, relatively stable or, or, or actually higher than what it was before. But what actually we wasn't taking into effect that kind of we're only tracking the, the, the visits, what Google are reporting to us. And if the people aren't clicking on the uh, consent button, then there's less visitors. So initially we thought, oh, yeah, you know, not much impact whatsoever. But when we actually saw how many visitors we was losing, yeah, the impacts were, you know, pretty great. And I, I still think the the great now, if you kind of, compare the stats when it came in in kind of February, March time versus now the traffic still disappeared. It, it hasn't come back. So we moved to kind of um, an invalid traffic cookie. And this is basically what all the parking com companies use. And this is basically kind of um, allows the parking companies to serve ads without the, you know, the, the consent popping up. So basically you're, you're allowing all the traffic through, but kind of on the flip side, you basically kind of, um, you're basically saying to Google, hey, th this track is invalid, so the EPCs may now be lower than what they were before. Um, kind of the, the, the shining light at the end of the tunnel, basically, is kind of, you know, Google also doesn't like kind of, you know, cookie consent. It, it's there basically to destroy, you know, not only the parking company's businesses, but also Google's. So it, it's definitely anti-Google, this policy. So kind of coming up towards the end of this year, beginning the next, hopefully, Google's going to kind of roll out kind of a, an advertising uh, service which is not reliant upon cookies. So how it's different is kind of, and this will either be a positive or a negative impact. Instead of kind of uh, tracking people's um, activities using cookies, it will track them using uh, certain topics which they may be interested in. So it'll look at their IP address and it'll look at kind of, I don't know, let's say wealth in this particular geo and it'll basically estimate what do I think this person would be interested in. For example, People which live in London is obviously going to be more attracted to kind of 
you know, high income products rather than someone, you know, I'm from Grimsby, you know, in England, you know, mm. if the targets hit me, they'd probably be looking for, I don't know, fish and chips or something. So they haven't even got yeah. the internet there yet, I think. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, it, it, I think that's going to change. And like, if it's going to be a good thing or a bad thing, you know, time will tell. Like when, when this does roll out, even with this kind of invalid uh, traffic cookie, what we've got now, it's still offering kind of Google the ability to filter out more traffic than, than what it was before. But basically, Google can pay lower for this traffic. It can decide more what ads to serve on this traffic. So you're still losing traffic. But in the future, when it goes to a cookieless ad serving uh, solution, all the traffic will come back again. And as far as how much traffic was lost, I'd probably say around about 30% of the traffic was lost when Cookie was coming in, as far as the impact um, from kind of, I'll be completely honest with people, kind of over the last 12 months, you know, anyone here what does part of the domains, it's been a tough 12 months. Um, really, really tough kind of cookies, impacted revenue, I'd say about 20%, 20 to 25%, it still continues to do so for multiple reasons. Um, and then also kind of, we went from kind of the highs of, you know, COVID, you know, we had like record breaking EPCs, record breaking RPMs, and now the economy is in decline. Everyone's kind of walking around with kind of, you know, unhappy faces. And, it, you know, and where does it go from here? You know, I just hope kind of the cookless ad serving technology, in, you know, provides an increase in EPCs. And I hope kind of, you know, on and off page optimization will also kind of have an increase because the parking companies are now responsible to, to kind of, reversing this decline basically and if anyone no matter who you part with if you're not happy with who you part with just speak to your account manager and say look you know what can we do with our domain names because it's down to the parking company to kind of earn your trust and you know earn your business and if they're not doing that then they should be doing something for you can i i just ask a question tess about the um what you were saying there about the uh, the future and the and the sort of content uh based on geo um I mean, that's something you know a lot more about than I do. But my, my first thought there is that how, how are they going to be able to do that accurately? Yeah, like, yeah, this is a million dollar question. You know, even the parking companies themselves, you know, you, you'd think kind of a parking company, you know, is, you know, everything that happens at Google, you know, we, we get told things, you know, with, you know, a month's notice or something. We, we're not kind of told six months in, uh, in advance. This is what's going to roll out. This is exactly what's going to happen, you know. The Google secret source is the Google secret source to the parking company as well. The only thing we can do is obviously ask as many questions as we can directly to Google and try and get answers to them. Uh, so yeah, the, the whole targeting thing, the only thing I know is kind of what I've read online and you can also read exactly the same online, how it's going to be, you know, targeting, you know, based upon topic and, you know, geo rather than kind of, I think the main difference is you, they're not going to be able to retarget the visitor anymore because cookies is what's required to retarget the visitor and they're not be able to. So if you're looking for a flight now and you're on a domain about, I don't know, let's say cars or something, you're still going to get flight ads. That won't be there in the future. So that may impact revenues further. They may go down, but you're going to have added traffic. So the EPCs and RPMs will go up. I think it's fair to say that parking has been in decline for a couple of years, right? Super hard business. When the changes came in in January across Europe and California, I'm going to go out on a limb and say revenue's down 50% um, in an already declining industry. And the key thing here is not much has been done in the last 20 years for parking. Everyone's reliant on a Google feed, and therefore Google dictate all the terms. Um, so the future is interesting because the innovation that could come into the space is crazy. And when we talk about money like arbitrage, this is a huge, huge um, business that, um, that over time has declined. Um, people still do well from it and people make a lot of money, um, but there is opportunity to really grow things. But certainly this, this year in January down uh, in my, um, in my numbers, probably 50% on revenue. And it's not a bad thing as well. Cleaning up traffic is not a bad thing because you don't need a million visitors. You can make more money with a hundred, um, visitors that are properly served and, and dealt with same as business. So the more friction you have in any business, the, the less of, uh, the less conversions you'll get. Thank you. Before we move to the next question, which I think that was a perfect segue, um, at, let's talk about the future. But um, audience question, I think I've heard at least five or six acronyms, and I don't know how much the audience knows them. Uh, we're going to start with the easiest one, uh, CTR. 
Who knows what CTR is? Go, shout it out. Click through rate, yes. Um, IVT. Oh, James knows. Take the mic. What is it? Yeah, invalid traffic. Okay. Uh, UPC. EPC, earnings per click. Earns per click. Earnings, earnings per click. And then you said two more acronyms. Yeah, yeah RPM, revenue per thousand. Okay. And? I think there's, there's one more. I think there's three, isn't there? This RPM, which is basically mass marketing, how many people can see your advert. CPC is kind of the next stage mm -hmm. up the funnel. So someone has to interact with your ad and advertisers pay for that click. And then the CPA, which is probably the top of the funnel, getting someone to do something, they're highly motivated and engaged. So they're kind of the three elements of Well said, thank you. Okay, let's talk about innovation and the future. Um, before we get there though, like what are the main problems today and what are the bottlenecks to innovation? Um, and if when you two talk, you have the like lamest microphone, hold it really close to your mouth. Or, or just shout. Or both. <laughs> Um, I mean the pro I mean the so we're talking about the the, the issues that we have today. Yes. Um, it, okay, I mean the um, I think a lot of the issues have already been kind of have kind of been touched upon. I mean the uh, the decline in, uh, in 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 RPCs or the decline in the uh, revenue on certain domains or on certain portfolios, uh, uh, over, especially over the past year, um, and um, I think. Uh, yeah, from uh, from from our perspective, yes, we we have seen this, and we have seen this especially towards the beginning of the year. So uh, I think around February March time, we saw a large dip um, in uh, in revenues. Um, the good news is is that we have seen this uh, this dip stabilize again, which I think is uh, is positive, of course, for, for for all the main portfolio owners. But it has led to um, a lot of our clients to make to make some uh, difficult decisions do they do they just, do they need to do, can they afford to uh, to to maintain the portfolio at the size that they have do they need to drop certain domain names and uh, yeah we've seen quite a few opportunities i mean the, this year i think it's been very much a buyer's market as well i mean certain uh, certain large portfolio owners looking to looking to um, uh, sort of part ways with uh, with with certain uh, with certain domain names um, we are, I mean, there's no, there's no kind of getting around it. Our three companies, we are very reliant on our tier one advertising partner, of course, and uh, we do offer, um, the, and we do, the, we do offer, uh, uh, I think we do all offer opportunities to, uh, to monetize as well through direct advertisers as well. Um, but um, I think looking to the kind of the next 12, 12 months to come, from my perspective, from my point of view, um, domain parking is a perfect, uh, is still a very, very perfect, very well, um, well, uh, well set out opportunity for large portfolio owners to to monetize their, their traffic. It's it, it's it's the, the key is the simplicity. It's so easy to set up. Um, it's so easy to uh, just to let just to let run. Um, no development is required, of course, and uh, I think. This is, for me, the most scalable, op the most scalable kind of option in order to, uh, in order to kind of monetize traffic on mass. Um, of course, from our perspective, I mean, I think for the next twelve months, if we're kind of kind of looking there, I think from the perspective of Parking Crew, which uh, which is part of Team Internet, um, we will probably be doing a lot of work on the back end that maybe not be immediately visible, but we, we, the work that we will be doing will be to improve exposure to, of our traffic, to improve um, uh, res uh, resolution and uh, the time it takes for, for for traffic to be shown. So. Yeah, I think uh, sort of in a nutshell, I think that domain parking is still a very legitimate um, uh, revenue stream, especially for large portfolio owners. Um, I, th I think one of the fundamental things about um, domain parking that's always been the case uh, is that there are, there is a finite number of good domains that you can park, right? Um, there are only so many to go around and the big portfolio holders that David talked about you, you, you can't suddenly just become one of those because you, you can't just get any old domain and it'll make money in parking, right? It, it has to have that traffic quality and, and you know, things like backlinks, what have you. It's in terms of bottlenecks. I mean, I think one thing you could say is, is that it's 
how can you decide now to get into it, right? It, it's it's very very difficult to get into now that you know all the good domains are taken, if you want to put it that way. Um, so I I guess if that that's one issue that I I have no I have no idea how to answer this, but I get think that's an issue that the domain industry has always been facing. That you know there's there's only so much to go around in terms of good domains. Yeah, I think kind of um, from my side of things, kind of yeah, the biggest bottleneck to the biggest threats to the industry certainly ad blockers. Um, pe people say to me, kind of, hey James, you know why is parking you know gone down over the years? You, you, you've only got to look at the, 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 the way people use the internet nowadays. Like in, in the heydays of domain parking, everyone kind of just visited websites. Now, you know, I'm not sure how many people out there can honestly say that they visit kind of new domain names every day, because I certainly don't. I, I just look at, you know, YouTube, Facebook, you know, browse me email and yeah, maybe Amazon or something. Th th those are the only sites I look at. So kind of the, the, the risk for the future is like less traffic because there's more people in kind of, you know, walk gardens around, you know, the, these kind of YouTubes and Facebooks, Instagrams uh, and everything. Uh, more ad blockers. Um, th this is a huge problem which didn't exist right at the beginning. And also kind of now antivirus programs also themselves becoming ad blockers. So there's a lot of these businesses working against the advertising industry uh, and they either will kind of, you know, want payment to become whitelisted to show your ads or they're just not even open to this and you can never, uh, you know, retrieve this uh, traffic back again. So I guess, you know, the, the only thing you can do is kind of, you know, work with these companies. And th this could be a positive thing kind of when cookie-less ad uh, technology comes along is a lot of these ad blockers, you know, some of them will, will detect the, you know, Google JavaScript, the other ones will detect cookies. So the, the ones which have got a problem with cookies specifically and being tracked, you may also, you know, get that traffic back again. But yeah, a lot of issues, yeah, basically with, you know, software working against us, I guess. Software's a bad thing sometimes. I think the bottleneck and the restrictions, basically the bottleneck is Google and the restrictions is Google. Everyone here relies on a Google feed that no one else can come into the market and Google pretty much control everything you do with that and the interesting opportunity is you literally if you have a hundred domain names you could do like for like yourself pretty straightforwardly because large portfolio holders are doing well arbitrage are doing well but if you have a hundred domains it just it's not viable and it's something that you could literally do over a weekend it's not that complicated all right let's talk about the future uh what do you see for the future at both you know uh soon and longer term uh one year three years ten years oh david looks excited david show us your whole parking crew shirt so respectful bringing that um i mean i think i touched on the next the next 12 months i for my from my perspective i don't think there's going to be a huge amount of change and i think the changes that will happen certainly a parking crew will happen in the back end so we will be working to uh even more increase reliability um, reduce the amount of any type of downtimes and uh, increase the exposure of your domains across the world. So wherever wherever they're accessed, uh, uh, ads are shown and pay, our pages are delivered. Um, I mean, in the next, I think in the next, uh, looking to looking kind of to the nearer future. I mean, I, I I personally I can't answer the question what's going to happen in the next ten years. I mean, ten years ago I would have told you that we wouldn't be sat, sat here today talking about this, but we are. So uh, I think in the I think in the next three years I think there will be there will be a shift. Um, as I said before, I think um, there will be certain domain names. I think maybe more generic domain names that don't work as well um, on uh, on the, 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 that work better on other on other plat on other on other platforms. So if you have a generic domain name that you're looking to sell, you might choose to forward this to a for sales page or to a company such as Cedo in order to in order to advertise the fact rather than uh, rather than park it itself. Um, I'm touched on as well direct advertisements. I think that this will uh, I think this will also um, potentially uh, take a uh, increase increase in kind of um, uh, volume and increase in accuracy as well. Um, and I think probably in the next three years I think we will there will be a lot more analysis done on the individual individual visitors so where are they coming from what browser are they coming from what are they actually interested in what are they looking for i think this uh, this could potentially also also play a role 
Um, but uh, but yeah, I think fundamentally, though, the uh, as I touched on before, the the simplicity and the ability for traffic portfolio owners to um, yeah to 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 effectively monetize their domains en masse with very little with very little effort. Um, I think this will, and, and with effort, I mean development. I think that this will this will kind of remain the key uh, to 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 domain parking success as well. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't add yet yeah, add too much to that. I think one thing we might also see in the near future, oh wow, I'm pre pretty certain of is you know we talked about the trend towards um, revenue through arbitrage rather than organic parking. I think we might see that trend continuing. In the next couple of years, certainly, I think like that that uh, movement to the, the the percentage that's done through arbitrage is is going to get even higher. Um, then we'll see what happens with that. But I see that trend continuing in the next uh, couple of years as well. Yeah, I think uh, certainly pay traffic, but I think there's also going to be you know definitely opportunities for kind of uh, developed sites as well, like. At the moment, we've talked about kind of organic traffic, you know, expired domains and kind of, you know, buying traffic. But then there's also people which have got kind of their own developed domain names. And up until this point, you know, the, the Google feed providers haven't had really an opportunity for those with developed websites. And certainly that's going to change. Um, so not at the moment, but definitely kind of parking companies will definitely have opportunities for website owners as well to display the Google ads there. And it'll, and it'll be at a, a higher RPM than just, you know, putting AdSense on it yourself. Um, so I think in the next 12 months, there's going to be big changes. I think um, there's three parts to the main parking. One is like for like that's now here at the moment. Rather than Google, you use affiliate based links. The second is lead gen. So um, that's, that, that's a very high converting. Um, business and then the third one is if you have a, a domain with a backlink profile it's going to degrade over time maybe two years and there's um there's a company domainui.com so if you have a look if you have an seo domain that declines over two years but you put a, an affiliate based shop on that site it will naturally you can you can stop that decline and you can end up kind of inverting that so i think there's, there's in my opinion because we're going into this in 12 months time it's going to be very different is, and, and when someone steps up and kind of throws the throws gauntlet down, other people are going to come in. Everyone's going to improve and get better. I'm looking forward to seeing it and looking forward to our panel next year, uh, seeing how much your predictions uh, pan out and, uh, and all your hard work as well. Um, thank you so much for your time and expertise up here. I've had a great view of Ryan's socks. Yeah, yeah, and then I'm kind of curious about everyone else's secret socks. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Oh, yeah. But um, thank you for your expertise. Uh, it was wonderful to have you on up here. And we'll hopefully see each of you next year. Oh. Thank you.